Hello and welcome to Church Online today. It is so good to see you and have you part of our Revive Church online service today. Here at Revive Church, we really wanna help people find purpose and life through a relationship with Jesus. And we really hope that today's message can help you do that. Uh, we wanna welcome you if you're here for the very first time, it's your first time joining us online, a special word of welcome to you. We'd love to give you a next step today. If you'd love to find out more about our church, why we do what we do, say what we say, we'd love to direct you to our our website, which is www.revivechurch.co.za. On our website, you can acquaint yourself uh, with our church, some of the things about us, and even sign up for one of our courses. Um, we are running our DNA, our Grow and our Shape courses in the first weekend in October, uh, the first Tuesday night. We'd love to invite you to that if you'd want to be a member and join up at Revive Church. You'd find all that information on our website, which encourage you to check out. Today, we really hope that you enjoy this message from our lead pastor, Swen Stephens. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're well. Hope you're going to talk to me, talk back to me. Amen. Okay. And uh, please, um, thank you so much. There. Um, uh, uh, Paul's, you know, Paul in, his, in the scriptures says, as, as I teach in all the churches, let me put it this way, as I teach in our church, don't let, don't let other people clap alone. If you hear someone do an awkward clap, just join them. Be like, I rescue you from this awkward moment because we want to clap together. We want to amen together. And uh, it's going to be a good morning. And it really has been. I really feel like we could just end there and it'll be great. But um, let's, uh, you did come for a message as well. So we're going to do that. And uh, if I haven't met you yet, um, my name is Swen. I lead the church here with a great and amazing team. Uh, that flows through every single area of service, and so we're so grateful and honored to host you and to have you. Hope you'll stick around for a cup of coffee, and I know there's always amazing breakfast wraps and all of that to, to be sold as well for you to be filled, amen, spiritually and in your stomach. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you there, Jeff. You, you, need a, you need a wrap or two, my friend. Um, and if you stay for the second service, there might be some mooses as well. I don't, I don't, uh, that's what I've heard. But uh, this morning, I've got a message I want to share with you called, Will Shepherds Rise? Will Shepherds Rise? Um, I went to, uh, I've been on two missions trip, missions trips, uh, both with my wife, Lara. And the first one we went to was to Lesotho. And Lesotho, we went to before we went to a missions trip in Zambia. And I'm so grateful because it was kind of like, you know, you're, you're wading into missions out in Africa. And anyway, so we went to uh, Lesotho and it was incredible um, because uh, Lesotho is a beautiful country, but it's mad cold. <laughs> it is mad cold. And um, we, I think they were baptizing people at one point. I'm like, I'm not getting into that river. You baptize yourself. Do you know what I mean? Just hold your breath. It'll be fine. It counts in Jesus' name. Um, I had a couple, actually a couple of months ago, ask me to baptize them in the, in the ocean. And I will never do it again. You know, some things you just have to go on your own. Amen. But I'll support you from the beach. Uh, that's why we do heated pools now. Thank you so much, Gary and Patty. But anyway, anyway, I digress. Went to Lesotho on a missions trip. And you know, when you, when you, when you live, when you, get, when you grow up in Cape Town, you legitimately believe that lamb, chicken, and fish come pre-packed in grocery stores. That's where you get them. You, they don't come from anywhere else, right? Chicken comes from pick and pay. And, and unless you're driving through like the Karoo where there's lots of, you know, farms, you don't really, I mean, you don't even give much time to think about it. But in Lesotho, I came to this realization, of, like they have shepherds, not, not people who fence the sheep in as they watch the sheep, but like shepherds who roam the mountains with sheep. And I was, this was amazing, okay, because I'd never experienced that before. And I realized that you didn't have to be highly qualified to be a shepherd. You, can be, you didn't have to be any age to be a shepherd. There were kids that were shepherds. And, and, and for me, that was pretty impressive that people would allow their children to watch sheep out in the mountains through the night. I'm like, that is, that is terrifying to me. But anyway, they were clothed in these heavy blankets. Uh, but there was this great community of shepherds. And, and while we were there, we actually had the opportunity to minister to them as well. But you never really think much of shepherds. To be a, a real shepherd is a very humbling lifestyle, right? You're not on your, you haven't got your iPhone open 
uh, you know, tweeting and, and making Instagram posts about Sean the sheep and Rebecca. And like, you, you don't have those moments. Look at this interesting leaf I found. I wonder if it, you know, <laughs> that doesn't happen. It's a very, very humbling lifestyle to wander around with sheep, right? And you're alone a lot of the time. And it's fascinating to me because none of us might aspire to be shepherds, yet God actually used shepherds to teach on leadership throughout the scripture. In fact, he uses leadership, he uses shepherding to be the analogy of how he leads his people. And so shepherds are inc it's an incredibly humbling and maybe even humiliating lifestyle for us living in cities. But it's how scripture describes leadership. God always looked for people to shepherd his people well. When you think about how God started uh, his covenants, all that he used shepherds. Abraham was a shepherd. Isaac was a shepherd. Jacob was a shepherd. All of Israel were skilled at shepherds. Even when they went to the land of Egypt, they said, hey, we are skilled shepherds. We've been shepherding for generations. We will shepherd the, the sheep of, of Egypt. And even after that, David, the, first ki or the, the second king of Israel, he was a shepherd. A shepherd boy, shepherd boy who was a worshiper, who became a warrior, who became king. And he and God has even given himself, Christ, as our shepherd, our good shepherd. In Jeremiah 3 verse 15, Scripture teaches that it's actually got, it's got on God's heart to give shepherds to his people who follow his heart. And so God wants to have shepherds in his church. Because it's how he takes care of people. And I want to read to us from Isaiah 40, verse 11, then we'll pray about what shepherds actually do. It says in Isaiah 40, verse 11, that now speaking of Jesus being the good shepherd, God being the ultimate shepherd, God being the one who is shepherding his people through all generations, says that he will tend his flock like a shepherd, which means to feed, like to pasture. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are a good shepherd to us, God. I thank you, Father, that you love us, you care about us, and you look after us, Lord. You do not leave us alone, but you are with us. And Father, I pray that this morning you would help us to understand your heart for shepherding. And I pray that you would help us, Father, to, come, to see Christ as our good shepherd. Father, I pray that your word would produce incredible harvest of righteousness in our life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See, God uses shepherds because shepherds care. Shepherds care the most. In John 10, Jesus says, you know what? When you hire someone to look after your sheep, they don't put the li their life on the line. But when the sheep are yours, you are willing to fight away every enemy that comes to take a sheep. David said, hey, I chased down lions and bears to rescue my father's sheep. Shepherds care the most. And I think in this world that we live in, there's a pushback to leadership because leadership is either a way to success or it's, you have to be charismatic to be a leader and all of that, or you have to have a certain set of skills like Liam Neeson, right? I have a particular type of skill set, and I will find you. Like, you think that leaders have to be the people that are just progressing so much, but the problem is that might be how the world looks at leadership, that the world looks at leaders and say, leadership is a power grab, and that's the example that we find. But in Scripture, leadership is really a service grab. Because as a shepherd, you look to serve, you put your life down, you put your care towards other people. And that's the real picture of when it comes to leadership in Scripture. But in Isaiah 40 verse 11, it's this picture of what Jesus, who is our ultimate shepherd, the good shepherd, the standard for life, He is the one that we look to when we want to understand what biblical leadership and biblical shepherding looks like. And in Isaiah 40, verse 11, in that one verse of Scripture, it speaks of four elements of what a good shepherd does. A good shepherd feeds the sheep. 
A good shepherd gathers the sheep. A good shepherd carries the sheep when they're hurting, they're broken, when they're injured. And a good shepherd leads the sheep to better places, to healthy places. And so this morning, I've got a particular agenda, yes. And that agenda I'll give to you right up front is to let our lives be submitted to shepherds. But my ultimate question is, will shepherds rise? Because what happens is, I've been leading church long enough that we have highly skilled leaders in business or in family or in schools. But when it comes to the kingdom, they don't want to lead. And there's a reason for that. I know what the reason is. But I think that one of the best things you can do in your spiritual life is actually lead a life group. I'll tell you why. Because in life group, you are literally doing the very thing Jesus has called us to do. And that is to make disciples. You actually have a direct involvement in shaping other people's spiritual future. You have a way of helping them, guiding them, a way of feeding them, gathering, carrying, and leading them. And the funny thing is like perfect people don't lead life group, but willing and prepared people do. People who care and people grow others. It's like those shepherds that I met in Lesotho. They didn't have to know the 15,000 Greek words for shepherding. They just shepherded. We don't have to know the Greek, the Hebrew, and the, and the prophetic words. What we just need to do is love people. Because what God is looking for is shepherds who love people enough to be able to, how can I say, care for them above ourselves. That's the qualification. Now, I'm not saying everybody is a shepherd, but I'm saying there are shepherds. And when you live out that shepherding lifestyle, that is the best thing that you can do, I believe, in your walk with God. Not only that, but when you are a leading in a life group, did you know you learn faster than everybody else? Because all of a sudden you actually have to like read up on stuff and you have to encourage other people and you're walking through, through brokenness yourself and you're going to speak healing into somebody else and you're like, okay, so God's word is, and I'm going to, I have to be full of faith so that I can give faith to other people. You grow faster when you shepherd people than when you're a sheep. Because you're living a different lifestyle. You're living for other people. And you're never alone when you lead life group. Although it does feel like it, doesn't it, sometimes? When you're in positions of leadership, it feels like you're alone. But you're never alone because there's always, always team around you. But I want to give us four things today. And a fifth one will be an extra. Four things today. That's, that, that speaks into this heart of shepherding that God has for people. And this is for, will shepherds rise? Or will there be people in this congregation today who say, you know what, I'm going to become a shepherd. But also, I'm going to give you some, in these four things, four things that shepherds give to us. And so we receive on both ends. This is a message that I believe runs on two tracks. The training is going forward. But it's, a, it's like multidimensional. There's, there's layers to this. It's like an onion. Okay? You can just keep peeling back the layers and get more blessing. Amen. Amen. Number one, shepherds feed people. Shepherds feed people. You know when the, the shepherd takes the sheep out? Their head is down. All they do is they want to eat. Eat, drink, and have a merry life. Right, shepherds need, I mean, sheep need shepherds for their survival. But sheep, what the, the shepherd takes them out, he takes them to a place where they can actually graze, where they can actually eat food. And what shepherds do for us is that shepherds always make sure that, that we are nourished, that we are fed. How are we fed? We're fed and nourished by the Word of God, the full counsel of God, not just our favorite teachings. Hey, how many, we, we as, as, as Christians, we, we do this all the time. We, we are attracted to our favorite topics. That's all we want to talk about. We love talking about, you know, the promises of God or the blessing of God. Or there's some of us who really love to, just to get teachings about end times and what the end is going to be like. And some of us like to always look into the past. However, that's like you and I 
eating our favorite food. And if I had to give my son the option, what his favorite food is, it's always vanilla ice cream, chocolate, and sour sweets. Now, you know, for a while, that's fine. But if he's going to live on that, he's going to become sick. And so what shepherds do for us is sometimes they lead us to veggies. <laughs> oh, my goodness, this message is so boring. Like, we've heard this before at some point. Give us the good stuff. Give us the meat. Now, sometimes shepherds give milk. Sometimes shepherds give grass. Sometimes give, shepherds give the meat, right? What we want to do is give a balanced diet, diet so that we can all be nourished in God's word. But not only do you come to the shepherds to receive food, but hopefully shepherds teach you how to feed yourself. Because the shepherd, what the shepherd does doesn't take the grass and say, open up, come, open your mouth, come on, come on, go, and shove it in there. What do shepherds do? Shepherds bring us to a place where there's bountiful food and the sheep actually have to chew the grass. They actually have to put their face in the ground and start eating. It's like that old analogy. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink or her drink. And so shepherds aren't these wells of wisdom that just pour nourishment into us. They actually provide an environment and an atmosphere where we can be nourished and we can learn. That you don't have to know the Greek and the Hebrew of salvation. You can just know that salvation is in Christ and you know how to engage with God and that's enough. Make no mistake that if you eat just your favorite foods, you're not going to be nourished. Not in, not in life, not in your soul. We eat meals that make us healthy. We don't just eat one type of food, but a balanced diet. And my wife taught me this early on. She's so full of wisdom. She said, sometimes when, you, like when you're reading scripture, you feel like, oh man, it's like, I'd rather go chew bark. But you know what? It's, it's the uninteresting carrots that you eat that give health to your eyes. Do you know what I mean? We need all of it. It might not blow our minds every single time, but God achieves a deep work in our lives through His Word because the Holy Spirit delivers His Word to our hearts like a skilled physician. Because God's Word is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. And the Holy Spirit is like that physician who He makes a little incision in our heart, plants the Word that it might not be mind-blowing right now, but in six months' time, it's revelation. And you've fed, you've eaten, you're well. Paul warned Timothy. He said to Timothy, listen, there are going to be, people are going to gather around teachings that their itching ears want to hear. And sometimes we've got to make sure that we're not coming to church just to hear our favorite topic. But we're coming to church or we're, we're gathering under shepherds who are actually rounding us out biblically. Hopefully, 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 the Bible offends you at least once this year. Hopefully, I offend you from stage at least once this year. What I mean by offending, I mean confront you with a word that goes, oh, I don't think I like what he said. Because we don't put our meaning on Scripture. Scripture changes what we find. Right? Is this, how, is this okay? Yeah. All righty, here we go. And so shepherds actually protect us with the right diet of teaching, not false doctrine that leads to wrong beliefs or wrong behavior. Shepherds make sure that there is food for sheep to eat. Amen. Number two, shepherds gather people. Shepherds gather people. In Matthew 26, 31, Jesus refers to an Old Testament passage and it says that I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. You see, without shepherds, sheep scatter. You know, the sheep are like, oh, what's over there? I want to go see. I want to go choose that grass over there. Oh, is that a crag? Is that a cliff? Let's go see what's over there. Well, I'm the shy one. I'm the shy one. I don't want the crowd. 
Let Sean be the charismatic one, yeah? He can get everybody together. <laughs> Where's the shepherd anyway? <laughs> See, what sheep just naturally scatter because their head is down, doing life, living it out, and just seeing what the next best opportunity is. And that opportunity can take them right off a cliff. Or even worse, they, sheep can get lost. And what's easy, I mean, when, if you see a sheep roaming by itself, what, come on, honestly, what are you thinking? You're thinking spit pride. <laughs> you're not a South African if you're not thinking how good that tastes. I'm just, I, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay? You're thinking that's a pretty juicy slice of meat right there. And the reality is, without shepherds, sheep will be scattered. And when sheep are scattered, they become vulnerable to those that are wanting to eat it. Those who are wanting to attack it. That's why the enemy goes after shepherds. Because it's difficult to steal sheep under the watchful eye of someone who's willing to lay their life down for someone else. That's why the enemy went after Jesus. Except if Jesus was smart, he had a better plan. And I find that, that leaders will come under so much pressure because as soon as leaders crumble under the weight of pressure, the sheep are free, free targets. And that's why we've got to pray for our leaders. Pray for the people who shepherd us because it's not an easy job. It's not an easy job to hear you whine. Not, no, not me. I mean, like people in your life. I've got people that I have to whine to. Everybody needs someone to whine to. Amen. But when sheep are scattered, they become vulnerable, especially things like the enemy. What this looks like is disconnected, wandering. Some finding their some and some are finding their own way back and others not. COVID has been a scattering season. Post-COVID, you know, and this is please don't. Uh, this is might, might be one of those times in the year that I'm going to offend you, but it's because I love you. Okay, I'm going to confront you. And if I do, it's not you personally. It's just. It's the mood that I'm, that I'm finding myself in maybe. Is that a big story that I'm hearing from Christians is stopped going to church. I got disconnected from people. I wandered off a bit in life and now I'm looking for a new church. And that's not knocking people because I, I, honestly, I, sometimes that is the way it works. But again, I, th- I probably said this before, but every church pastor I speak to is, is actually shepherding new sheep right now. Not, in, not discluding us, like we're in that as well. And some of that is good, but you know, I wonder how many people have found their way back into church. That's my concern. My concern isn't that people have gone from one church to another church. My concern is that in the disconnect, in the wandering, how many people have been led astray and have fallen captive to the enemy. That's my concern. And so when there is no shepherd in your life, you're prone to wondering. And then some Christians are gonna, who know their Bible are going to be smart. They're going to be like, yeah, but Jesus is my good shepherd. Yes, he is, but he also gave you a shepherd on earth to follow. Wow, it's quiet. Like it's, <laughs> it's just, I'm thinking it was just very thoughtful. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 12, he says, What do you think if a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away? Will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go back to look for the one that wandered off? Like this is what shepherds do. Shepherds gather people. Shepherds make sure that we're together. Hey, you haven't been in church for a while. Are you okay? Hey, you haven't been in group for a while. What's going on in your world? We gather people. We gather people because the heart of the shepherd is to protect. When you're gathered, you're protected. But when you're scattered and wondering, you're vulnerable. And so what do you think our shepherds do? Shepherds always want to make sure we're together. And like for me, like online, watching church online is not being the church. I think it's a great supplement, but it makes a terrible, terrible replacement. Because you're gathered to no one. 
you watch it online, you don't attend a group, you don't serve, you're just like, you're like one of the other sheep watching over the fence going, oh, I wonder what's going on over there. Oh, the food looks so juicy and nice. Oh, but you know what? I have to walk across this fence. I don't know. I have to make a commitment. Nah. And there's a little wolf. It's an animated sermon today. Is gatherings the thing that saves you? No, Jesus is the one who saves you. But gathering protects you. Gathering builds you. Gathering forms family around you. Gathering brings friendship around you. We need gatherings. We need Sunday services. We need groups. We need teams. We need get-togethers. We need brides. We need watching rugby. All of that with our church family because it's all the gathering. And it's in those gathering moments that we actually let our guard down and something comes out and guys go, hey, actually, you know what? I'm going to pray for you now. Can we meet up about a coffee maybe later on and, and actually have a talk around this? Because we want to help you. Amen. Amen. So online is not bad, but it's not a replacement for everyone who's going to watch this this week. <laughs> You know what's amazing? I love, I love our church, I love our online thing, and we've got an amazing online like presence. It's crazy, but it's amazing that people actually, we we found that, um, I think it's about sixty percent of people actually don't watch this on Sunday. They watch it on Monday and Tuesday. Putting it out there, I'm putting it out there. But good shepherds ensure we gather because they care for the well-being of people. And it helps them to respond quickly to needs. And so if the, your she the shepherds in your life are asking you how you are, it's not because they don't like you. It's because they love you. Amen. The third one is this. Shepherds carry people. They carry people. It means they supply the needs. They carry burdens. They help people. Why? Uh, one shepherd cannot carry a carry hundred sheep. <laughs> carry. I'm thinking about lamb curry. <laughs> Le shepherds cannot carry a hundred sheep. But you know what happens if a, if a sheep gets sick, ill, or maybe it, it, it like breaks an ankle or something happens, the shepherd out of care and love will pick up the sheep and carry the sheep. Maybe it's an old sheep, maybe it's a very young sheep, I don't know, but carry the sheep for a while. Not always, because the goal is that sheep gets healthy and healed and whole and walks on its own. Carry your own burdens. But sometimes you need a shepherd who's going to love you enough to say, hey, you're going through the worst time of your life right now. How can I carry you and help you through this season? Through this season, not through life. Through this season. But shepherds, they, they love us. When the sheep are hurt and weak, the shepherd will carry them because he cares for them personally. It's like what Jesus, Jesus said, that he, he's the good shepherd. He knows his sheep by name. So it's one thing being in a church where, yeah, okay, there's a pastor, but does the pastor know your name? No, but your life group leader will, and your spouse's name, and your kid's name, and their birthday. Be careful of being pastored from thousands of kilometers away, because shepherds are around their sheep, around their people. Mercy, kindness, and pastoral care. Good shepherds ensure we are carried when we're hurting. Do you know one thing that I absolutely love about our life groups? And if you're not in a life group, you probably wouldn't know this. But when people are actually, when they go through difficult times, like when they get sick or when they go to hospital or when they're going through trials in life or they're giving birth, which could be another kind of trial. You know what happens in a life group? The life group all will get onto a food roster that that person doesn't have to cook for a week or two. That doesn't happen anywhere else. That's an amazing thing. Where, where care packages can be put together because someone is thinking about you and what you're going through. That's what care and pastoral care looks like. The fourth, fourth one and possibly the last one is this. Shepherds lead people. Shepherds on. I only want to hear one click, yeah? We're We're, we're, we're going. You're, you're, you're going. No, what do shepherds do? They gently lead their sheep to better places of living. They take them from, okay, we've eaten here. Now we need to go there. 
We need to keep progressing. We need to keep moving to the goal, moving towards the target. Can we do that? And you know, there's a goal for your spiritual life that shepherds are always trying to lead you to the next thing in your spiritual journey. Shepherds love you too much to leave you in the place where you are. Because if you keep feeding at the place that you are, eventually that food's going to run out. What shepherds do is they go, okay, come everybody, let's go. Come, come, we're going. Leading them to better pastures, places of rest, and sometimes places of work, improving their lives as they go. Shepherds go before us. They guide us to better living. They lead us towards spiritual growth, discipleship. Our lives are healthier and better. It's not always where we want to go. Come on, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Sometimes when you're chowing, the sheep are chowing on the, the good stuff, and they're like, oh, God, I don't really want to go over there. But they don't know what's coming. The shepherd can see what's coming, and he knows, oh, that's a better place. I don't want to go there. I don't want to serve. I'm too busy. Oh, this is, I love you. Have I told you that? I love you. I'm tired. I, don't, I just want to do it my way. And, and, and what the shepherd goes, it's okay, it's okay, come on, come on, come on. Let's keep going, let's keep moving. The problem is if you don't submit to the leadership of the shepherd, you start wandering again. And the shepherd's going to come gather you, but he's going to move with the flock. And we have to move with the flock because we're, we're being led to is healthy. And what happens when we get there, the sheep goes, I'm so glad I came, it's better here. Harry, Willis, Frank, even <laughs> Sheila is here. And we're having a buffet of grass. And no, I don't mean a special kind of party. God, it's a work in progress. But what I've seen in my life is very often my view of life is about this big. And God has placed shepherds in my life that I've submitted my life to and say, Swain, you're in a comfort zone. You need to get out of it. You need to travel to that next place. You need to put on a bigger jacket. You have to have more faith. You have to make wiser choices and wiser decisions. And I don't want to hear that. I'm not like, oh, that's such good. Thank you so much. I feel like I've just been slapped and then hugged at the same time. But I'm so grateful because whenever, whenever I've done that, I've been like, wow, look at what God has been doing. Wow, look at the healing in my life. Wow, look at how I've progressed. I've put off going to see a psychologist for years. I'm so glad I finally listened. And my wife's like, yeah, I've been telling you that for so long. And we resist what's healthy because we think we know it. But shepherds lead us to a point of health. Amen. I hope this is helpful, if not entertaining. And we have a place here where we are leading people to. We want to lead every person in our church to find life in Jesus and to find purpose through Jesus. We have what we call a pathway where we want to make sure that all the sheep that God gives us, all the people that God gives us, we are able to lead them in the purpose of God for their life, that they would experience the fullness of joy in Christ Jesus. That we're here for more than just ourselves. That's what I love about shepherds. Shepherds realize that life is not all about them. Or does it have to always be about you? Or can it be about other people? I love that about shepherds. It's hard to say, you know what? I've got my own issues, but I love, I love the people around me. Anyway, this pathway. This pathway, and you can check it up on our website, by the way, revivechurch.co.za. It's on, just click the pathway link there. It'll, it'll explain to you exactly the journey we hope you will take and that we will lovingly lead you on. We are getting crazy intentional in, on our staff right now. We'll lead you, make sure that, hey, you come to church on Sundays and more than once a month. We'll make sure that you have a relationship with Jesus or at least help you to have a relationship with Jesus. Make sure that everybody who proclaims and professes faith in Christ is water baptized. There's reasons for all of that. I can't go into them right now. Come to our courses. 
want to make sure that everybody in our church, they, 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 they grow in community by stepping into the DNA course. DNA course for our church is our membership course. It's where we teach you what your purpose is, what God's purpose for your life is. And we teach you how in this church you can fulfill that. What is our DNA? Because it's not enough to believe. Sheep can believe in the shepherd and still wander off. Even Satan believes in Jesus. Did you know that? It's not enough to believe. We need to, to belong to a flock, to a church, to a community. We have a course called Grow, where we want to teach you spiritual growth tools and principles, like how to have a relationship with God, how to read your Bible, how to pray, all that stuff. This is how you eat the grass and you grow. We have a course called Shape, which is getting you into shape. No, it's realizing what God's shape for your life is. Oh, I'm, I'm designed this way, and this is why, and this is the heart. And oh, and then there's a space to be equipped and empowered to live out God's call for your life, to serve Jesus, and it is the road to spiritual maturity and beyond. And so these, this pathway we were trying to lead everybody on is uh, we're starting it already um, on the 4th and 11th of October. And if you, haven't, if you haven't subscribed or registered yet, please do it. It's one of three courses. If you've done DNA, do grow or do shape. We don't mind. But it's going to become sequential from next year. But if you're not a member of our church and you want to go like, I want to belong, then DNA is for you. And you can actually use your connection cards on your seat just right there and we will register you or you can go onto our website and do it there. It's on the 4th and the 11th of, September, of October from 7 to 9 p.m. and there will be childcare available as well. So ultimately there are two things. If you're not in a group, you need one. And if you could shepherd, lead one. That's pretty good. Now that's, that is tweetable. If you're not in a group, you need one. If you can shepherd, then lead one. We'll put training and team around you. We can't do this alone. Shepherds need to rise in Numbers. I'm not going to read it, but for your study later. Numbers 11. Moses has this, this how, how to say it. He has this emotional breakdown. And he says, God, kill me, please. Because I cannot carry the burden of this people. And so what God says to him is, okay, bring me 70 people and I will anoint them and they will help you to carry the burden. We cannot shepherd alone. Will shepherds rise? Is God speaking to you today? I'm so grateful that we get to be in groups where people shepherd us, but I believe that God's calling you to be a shepherd of other people. What do you need to be a shepherd? You need to care. That's the qualification. And obviously love Jesus. So let's close up this message today. As we pray, I want to lead us to the good shepherd. And that's Jesus in John 10, 10. 1 Peter 2 verse 25 though says, For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. I want to encourage you today not to wander off from your relationship with Jesus, but to submit your life to the great shepherd who leads us because he saves our soul and he can be fully trusted. And I'm gonna pray for us this morning. Father, I thank you so much for your grace and mercy. Father, I pray that you lead us all to good shepherds. You lead us all, those you've called to be shepherds. And Father, right now, I just pray that we would always remember that you are more than enough for us, Lord, that you would, you would guide us you would lead us and bring us to great places. Father, I thank you that you, do never, you never leave us nor forsake us, but that you go through all situations and circumstances with us. And we give you praise and glory today, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 
wow, wasn't that just an encouraging message today from our lead pastor, Swen? We really hope that that message found you where you were today. We really hope that message spoke to you um, and that you know a little bit more about yourself and your relationship with Jesus was strengthened through that message. Well, we really hope that you've had an awesome time with us. And we just wanna remind you and encourage you again, if you'd love to find out more about our church or even become a member here at Revive Church, please head over to our website, www.revivechurch.ca.za and you can connect yourself through us there. You can contact us on the website. You can fill an online connection card or you could register for any of our courses that we'll be running on the first Tuesday night in October. Well, hey, I hope you've enjoyed the service today. We can't wait to see you again. Same time, same place next week. God bless.